Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to Rosary Biotech Limited earnings conference call. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the conference over to Mr. Anup Pujari from CTR India. Thank you and over to you, sir. Thank you. Good evening, everyone. And thank you for joining us on Rosary Biotech Limited's Q3 and 9M FY21 earnings conference call. We have with us Mr. Edward Menez, Promoter and Executive Chairman, Mr. Manikantan Vishwanathan, Group CFO, and Mr. Ms. Mansi Mizal, CFO of the company. We would like to begin the call with opening remarks from the management, following which we have the forum open for a question and answer session. Before we start, I would like to point out that some statements made in today's call may be forward-looking in nature, and a disclaimer to this effect has been included in the earning presentation shared with you earlier. I would now like to invite Edward G. to make his opening remarks. Good evening, everyone. And thank you for joining us on our Q3 and 9M FY21 earnings call to discuss the operating and financial performance for the quarter. I trust that you and your families are safe. I hope you all had the opportunity to go through our results presentation, which provides details of our operational and financial performance for the third quarter and nine months ended 31st December 2020. To begin with, we have delivered a healthy performance during the quarter, registering a top-line growth of 29%. Our home personal care and performance chemicals, that is HPPC business, continues to record robust performance driven by healthy offtake witnessed in hygiene products and antiviral portfolio sales. This, along with healthy demand, for other product categories in FMCG segment enabled, uh, enabled us to record healthy volumes in the HPPC business during the quarter. The textile specialty chemicals business, which is TSC, We request all the participants to please stay connected while we reconnect Mr. Edward. Ladies and gentlemen, the line for Mr. Edward is reconnected. Thank you and over to you, sir. Yeah. Uh, so the textile specialty chemicals TSC business is also seeing gradual normalization in demand and we expect this momentum to strengthen in the quarters ahead. Exports across the TSC segment also remain steady. During the period under review, animal health and nutrition, that is the AHN business, was impacted on account of demand slowdown. However, we expect a pickup in demand and sales for this segment in the medium term. From an operational standpoint, I am happy to share that our new state-of-the-art certified R&D laboratory, the Rosari Center of Excellence at IIT Mumbai, which was operationalized last quarter, is progressing as planned. One of the key focus areas for us is towards leveraging upon our R&D capabilities and intelligent chemistry principles to seed new business lines centered on our four core chemistries. In sync with this growth strategy, our dedicated R&D team, both in Mumbai and Silvasa, are constantly evaluating upon various opportunities to introduce new product niches. Accordingly, we have a strong pipeline of new products across categories of paint, water treatment, performance chemicals coming up in the next few months with impetus on sustainability and environment friendliness. Our new product launches across hygiene, 
laundry and fabric care segments are also seeing improved acceptance among existing and new customers in the domestic market. On the whole, we are seeing enhanced momentum across our businesses and are confident that demand and consumption trends will only strengthen in the quarters ahead. With this, I would like to conclude my address. And I would also now uh, uh, speak out uh, for a little bit on the marketing part. On the marketing part, we have reported an encouraging performance this quarter, supported by healthy demand and volumes, especially in our HPPC business. We are witnessing improved traction in engagements with several customers in the FMCG space, leading to new client wins. Uh, even our TSC business is marking a steady sequential improvement in sales with healthy recovery in demand both from domestic and export markets. The performance of our AHN business was subdued during this quarter, but we expect it to recover over the next few quarters. On a 9M basis as well, we have delivered an encouraging performance across business lines. While we saw value growth mostly in the first half of the fiscal, in the third quarter our performance was mainly driven by improved volumes, especially across the HPPC and TSC domains. We hope to achieve a healthy mix of volume and value from our diversified product portfolio that should enable us to report strong performance going forward. From a profitability standpoint, our industry witnessed challenges in international logistics due to acute shortage in containers required to transport raw materials. This resulted in some supply side disruptions during the quarter, which impacted raw material prices locally. So in order to maintain adequate supplies, we sourced some of the key raw materials domestically, which resulted in higher than normal raw material expenses. This has had a moderate variation on our gross profits and margin performance during the quarter. However, this situation was transient in nature and has already normalized, and going forward, we anticipate our margins to remain, remain at healthy levels. On the operational front, I am happy to share that the first phase of our greenfield facility at Dahej is fully operational. Full oper operationalization of the unit is also progressing as per plan, and we remain on track to commission the plant by March 2021. We have a strong pipeline of new products, which should also help us to sustainably ramp up utilization levels at our fully commissioned Dahej unit for the next three to four years. On the whole, we have delivered a steady performance in the nine month period of the fiscal. We are increasingly growing our foothold across markets in India and are constantly focusing towards enhancing business efficiencies across the HPPC, TSC, and AHN businesses. We are also aggressively embracing sustainability in all our business operations to accelerate growth and maximize customer benefits. All our three businesses remain strong growth drivers for us. And as we look forward, healthy macros along with a stabilized raw material environment should further help us build momentum. On the whole, we are confident of the future growth potential and opportunities across the domestic market over the medium to longer term. On that note, I would now request Mansi, our CFO, to share her perspectives on the financial performance for the quarter. Over to Mansi. Thank you, Edward, sir. Good evening, everyone. Let me provide you a brief overview of the financial performance for the quarter. During the quarter, we have delivered a healthy performance given by improved demand and traction across the HPPC business and gradual normalization in demand in TSC business. On a consolidated basis, revenue came in at 210 crores as against 162.4 crore in quarter two, uh, 3 FY20. Revenues from HPPC stood at 119.6 crore, contributing to 56.9% of revenues followed by TSC business at 78.2 crore, contributing to 37.3%, and AHN at 12.2 crore, contributing 5.8% of total revenues. On the profitability front, EBITDA stood at 34 crore, as against 30.1 crore in quarter 3 FY20. As covered by Edward Sir, gross profit and margins during the quarter were impacted on account of supply-side disruptions. 
Gross margin in Q3 FY21 stood at 33.4%, with EBITDA margins at 16.2%. Depreciation was higher at 6.1 crore owing to additional part capitalization of the H facility. After we commissioned the entire Greenfield facility in March 21, we would fully capitalize the investment towards this unit. This would lead to some more increase in the depreciation charge in quarter 4 FY21. The additional charge will be absorbed efficiently as the new facility starts contributing to performance going forward. Interest cost during the quarter stood at 0.3 crore. I would like to highlight here that the company has a very strong balance sheet and its net cash position stood at 100 crore as on 31st December 2020. This is despite further investments towards the Dahej facility during the quarter. So cash from operations were also healthy and company's overall networking capital cycle maintained at steady levels during the period under review. PAD during the quarter stood at 21.6 crore as against 18.3 crore in quarter 3 FY20. On that note, I come to the end of our opening remarks and would request the moderator to open the forum for any operational and strategic led questions that you may have. Thank you. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handsets while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Ankur Periwal from Access Capital. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, hi, sir. Thanks for the opportunity and uh, congratulations for a, for a good set of numbers. Uh, two questions. First, on the, the revenue side, uh, now pretty pretty impressive performance there and a sharp jump in on, even on a Q1, Q front in the HPP side. Uh, wanted to understand, you know, uh, better this space, whether there's an incremental cont contribution of Rosari personal care here or it's a ramp up of the existing products or the newer clients have, have come up, you know, in terms of the driving the revenue growth for this quarter. Okay, uh, thank you, uh, Ankurji, uh, for your question. So the uh, revenue bump up that we have seen in the HPPC segment uh, is basically because of an increase in volume pickup. So we have found that in HPPC, the volume pickup has been uh, better in this quarter. Uh, and uh, the personal care business, uh, the um, uh, Rosari Personal Care uh, Limited, Private Limited, that has also started billing in the last quarter, and we have got some uh, amount of sales from that uh, personal care, but that is not the big contributor here. Here the contribution has come from a volume sales in the cleaning part of it. Uh, what has happened is uh, that the uh, sanitizers and the infection control portfolios, those have normalized, but the hmm. hand wash and the cleaning chemicals have a jump. The hand wash, the cleaning chemicals, as well as the detergents, they have given a jump. So that, that's where the uh, uh, higher sales have come from HPPC segment. Apart from that, the first phase of our Dahej plant has also been completely operationalized and because of which uh, additional performance chemicals have uh, started moving. That is the additives in the paint, uh, in the paper and in the water treatment have also started moving. So those volumes have also added uh, to our uh, sales. Okay, great, sir. Uh, and sir, on the raw material side, uh, while you did mention, uh, you know, uh, the higher sourcing from local, uh, you know, players because of the global supply chain disruption, uh, would be fair to look at the nine month performance then, you know, from a comparison perspective, and the nine month number, nine month number, you know, average gross margin at around 36, 36 and a uh, half percent, and a bit of around, you know, 18 percent, will be a decent number to look at from a more, you know, sustainability perspective. Yeah, Ankurji, you're right. Uh, uh, in in uh, in the sense that uh, there was a international logistic disruption, and uh, it's it's uh, it's not a, it's no secret in the last quarter, uh, which has led to uh, some impact on the gross margins, which is actually uh, a virtue. I mean, uh, it is an artificial increase in uh, raw material prices. Uh, however, you will also see that our uh, textile specialty chemicals and HPPC uh, share of the business has grown. So if you look at the animal health and nutrition, that share of the business has come down to 5.8, which was around 9%, uh, 9 to 
and animal health and nutrition business having the highest gross margin even that product mix change has some impact so it's a, a double whammy for us one is an artificial uh, hike in the raw material prices which is which was temporary and which has already uh, you know uh, metered down uh, as well as the product mix change so both these have affected the gross margin so it is very fair that you look at the nine month uh, results where they are within guidelines that the top line is as per what we expected the ebitda margin is also between the 16 and 18% uh, that we have been uh, that we have been uh, guiding for the last three quarters and uh, we are confident that uh, we will achieve uh, these results at the end of the fourth quarter great advocate thanks a lot for your comments and all the best you're welcome sir thank you the next question is from the line of sanjay jain from icici securities please go ahead yeah thank you and uh, Uh, good afternoon everybody good afternoon yeah a uh, couple of questions from my side uh, to edward you tried to answer some of them uh, in the previous question uh, but what is the incremental uh, contribution to our revenue particularly hppc category from our new plan uh, and was it that uh, we always had a, a contract and uh, the uh, capacity bottleneck uh, was constraining us in terms of growth or this is purely the new customer new product which is driving that's one uh number two again a follow up question on the same side we have always been talking of seeding new products in a uh, new category which uh, drives a new engine for us so uh, can you give a little sense in terms of incremental revenue what we have been adding uh we did mention that paper paint and water treatment has added but uh, some color in terms of are uh, the incremental contribution they adding to the growth uh, that would be helpful and uh, what is the potential of these uh, category in terms of uh, growth from uh, from now to say next 5 years so that's on the hppc category i will ask few questions follow up uh, after this yeah so thank you sanjay ji uh, for your question um, in the hppc cat- uh, category uh, like uh, you have mentioned that Uh, a very big de bottlenecking has happened at silvasa so because of the de bottlenecking happen- happening at silvasa and the first phase of our dahej plant coming up so what has happened is uh, many of the customers which were, which had been developed and had you know uh, uh, demand were not being serviced and we were servicing the sanitizer and the disinfection portfolio in the last quarters that became possible yeah uh, in the third quarter because of uh, the new facility which gave us some production from there so just for your uh, uh, understanding uh, we uh, were able to manufacture uh, almost uh, 5000 tons uh, of production from the new facility and that's that's one of the reasons why the hppc segment uh, has been able to uh, give us higher sales the sales the demand was there but because of the capacity Uh, utilization and constraint and the demand because of the uh, uh, covid-19 situation we could not service that part of the business and then in the third quarter facility was available i mean the capacity was available the demand started picking up and that's where the volumes in the hppc picked up now coming to your second question on uh, seeding so yes uh, we are very happy to uh, inform you that our Uh, rosari center for excellence at iit mumbai is now fully operational and since it is fully operational we have a number of products uh, that are uh, uh, that are now available not only for the uh, hppc segment but they are available now for paints for water treatment as well as for the rosari personal care so like i said a small contribution of rosari personal care came to us in the in the third quarter but i think that uh, will become larger because a lot of products are ready uh, for introduction uh, with certain uh, customers that we've shortlisted in the cleaning space uh, the hand wash as well as the detergents market has also nicely picked up because uh, because a lot of uh, uh, institutional uh, areas have opened up hospitals uh, uh, restaurants hotels they have opened up and the cleaning space also has is giving us an uptick so i believe that uh, uh, with a lot of uh, products in the pipeline uh, these uh, segments the paint the paper 
the cleaning chemicals, the water treatment, and rosary personal care. Uh, not to forget the ceramic industry. The ceramic industry will also open up uh, in this quarter because the age facility will now uh, go to more than 50% uh, oper operationalization in, in the month of January. Uh, thanks, thanks, Edwardji. But a couple of things. Uh, so when you say cleaning and detergent, you mean uh, institutional cleaning and detergent. It does under understanding right. No, no. Uh, when I say cleaning and detergents means the detergent industry also is picking up. In the okay. sense, we sell a lot of additives to the detergent industry and okay. the dairy facility also manufactures additives. So that will also pick up in the coming months. That is that's okay. what I want, meant to say. No, no, I just wanted to clarify whether we, we are talking about boozel or we are talking about these uh, additives. It's so a combination. Of course, this will also is picking up because uh, institutions, additives. hospitals, hotels, restaurants, uh, institutions are opening up. So that will pick up, but since Buzil is not a large, uh, uh, what you can say, uh, sales for us at the present moment, so that will also add to the cleaning chemicals uh, uh, place. But the, the detergents and the cleaning chemicals that are being used uh, in the retail segment where we sell our additives, that will also pick up nicely for us in the coming quarters. Got it, got it. And when we say that the sanitizer part and uh, the other cleaning uh, disinfectant part, which are disproportionate demand during the initial phase of COVID is now normalizing uh, and we are seeing growth in the performance product. The mix has changed in this quarter. That means a significant amount of incremental revenue has come from the performance product. Is that understanding right? Uh, not really. What I, want, what I meant here was that when, when I say that the demand as well as the prices have normalized. So we have got volume growth, but since the COVID times, the pricing has now come to a normal uh, stage. You know, in the initial stages, the pricing or the margins were higher. So when the prices go down, the revenues also will go down. But we have, we have got very good uh, uh, volume demand. Got it, got it. Just one more last follow-up question on it, then I will go to the tech side. When we say that we have uh, been able to manufacture additional 5,000 metric ton in this quarter in our new facility, uh, what does it mean in terms of utilization, number one? Number out of these 5,000, uh, how much has gone to a non-HPC category? So these are the two questions. Okay. So uh, uh, what has happened is to de-bottleneck Silvasa, we've also taken uh, some of our products that we manufacture as ingredients in textile, uh, textile specialty chemicals to the H so that uh, Silvasa gets uh, de-bottleneck. De so I cannot give you a breakup of how much has gone here and there. But a significant uh, amount has gone to HPPC and the rest has gone to textile specialty chemicals. That's helpful. I was not looking for number. It was directly good enough. You are telling me a significant part of it is still HPPC. Yes, yes, thank you. Got it. Uh, on the textile side, now we have seen a strong demand, but we haven't seen this kind of demand in the textile companies. Is it fair to assume that uh, we have been gaining market share in India for our textile chemicals? That's number one. Uh, number two, how has been the export? We said that it has seen a healthy growth. When we see healthy growth, growing faster than the overall TCS segment or uh, it is still in line with the TCS segment? Uh, now, why I say that the textile volumes has increased quarter and quarter, uh, we have something like, you know, between 35 and 40 percent increase in quarter and quarter demand for textile uh, volumes. Now, that is because the volume was very low in the first two quarters. You know, it was considerably low. So no, that demand has normalized, Edward, and therefore we've been able to get back our share. No, no, Edward, I'm not talking QQ. QQ is not a right comparison given the kind of base we had. Yes. I'm looking more, more YOY. So YOY also we have grown like 11%, right? Yes, correct. Yeah. It's higher than the textile uh, industry growth. Correct. Uh, now, how much of it is driven by export? Are we going much faster in terms of export, or it's higher market share gain in India? That's, that's what I wanted to understand. Okay, so uh, uh, from my point of view, the export remains almost uh, whatever we had uh, uh, given a guideline between 8 to 10 percent, you know, of our sales. So uh, the export has not gone faster or slower than what it was before. The export has re remained constant. But what we see is a uh, number of, because textile uh, specialty chemical industry is very fragmented, and there are a large number of small scale players in, in the textile industry. So uh, we, we, we have uh, found that the uh, larger corporates now 
want the supplies from corporates like us, you know, like, uh, like textiles. And uh, in one way, I could say that we've been able to take some market share from the small scale industry. Okay, so it's becoming more organized is what we are telling. Yes, it is, it is moving towards the organized segment and some of them uh, really were completely washed out during the uh, uh, COVID-19 situation and may, may take some more time to get back into competition, you know, kind of thing. Got it, got it. Uh, the next question is, next question of set, uh, next set of questions are the cost. Now, we said that we do import a raw material. What percentage of our total raw material get imported? Uh, now, uh, the second one is we were planning to procure a key raw material from BPCL Kochi factory. Has that started? Uh, no, BPCL has not yet begun. Uh, BPCL is planning to be uh, planning to be operational maybe sometime uh, uh, by end of Feb. That is what they say. Uh, however, uh, your question, uh, answer to the question of how much uh, how much of our products are being imported, it's in the same uh, in the same region between seven and ten percent of our raw materials are imported. You know, our import and exports are almost the same, and they are nicely hedged for us. We are in a very good position there. Now that's what I wanted to understand, the reason for the gross margin compression. One, I completely appreciate that AHN contribution has come down and that really has uh, played a mixed change impact on the uh, uh, gross margin. But on the raw material, when we speak about hedging, uh, then why was the compression there in terms of gross margin? Uh, because, uh, because I'm not saying my raw material was stuck. What I'm trying to say is the raw material that came into India. You know, okay. that came into India was delayed, delayed for all kinds of chemicals. So whatever chemicals were coming from outside, there was a huge congestion in the container uh, availability, basically. And therefore, the raw material price artificially went up locally. It's not the raw material that I import directly. The raw material that I import directly also did not come in on time. And therefore, uh, we had to cover our raw material locally. So they, we had to uh, get some, uh, I mean, pay some higher prices for them. But also, the raw materials that we buy locally, they have some inputs from uh, abroad. They, they also were delayed, and there was an artificial price increase. So you are referring to surfactant where the prices have shot up? Yeah, surfactant's prices had shot up, and again, they have norm normalized. You know, in the last quarter, because of this reason, some surfactants and many of the raw materials, amines and silicones, all of them were impacted actually in the last quarter. So, so it was not one category. You are telling this entire bucket of the raw material, whether you directly or indirectly imported, Absolutely. have been hurt. Absolutely correct, yes. Absolutely correct. Got it, got it, got it. Uh, the last question from my side. Uh, so you mentioned that we will end this uh, project by March 21 and we are on target to A. Uh, so what part of the project has already been completed and what is pending? Uh, as, I, as I already mentioned in my opening statement, that first phase is completely operationalized. And uh, we, uh, we are now in a position to manufacture annually, say, 70 to uh, 7,000 tons, 72,000 tons from this facility. Uh, of 1 lakh 32. Yes, of the 1 lakh 32. So, so nearly, uh, you know, more than 40, uh, 50 percent of it is already done. Uh, now, um, the rest remain, uh, the remaining uh, facility, because everything is, is ready, only the vessels are uh, in the installation phases. Uh, that is why we are saying that by March 21, the entire facility will be up and running. Great, Edwardji. Uh, it was really you and uh, nice talking to you. And thank you, Mr. Vishal. Thank you. Thank you, Sanjay Ji. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Rohit Nagaraj from Sunidhi Securities. Please go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, thanks for the opportunity and uh, good evening, uh, Edward, sir. Uh, so, two questions. Uh, one is uh, in terms of the attraction in business. So, uh, one of the uh, uh, you know uh, one of the premise of uh, listing was that we will gain a uh, lot of eyeballs from the global players as well as local players. So, post listing, uh, has there been any material change in terms of our image? locally and globally and have we seen any kind of traction on that regard in uh, all the three businesses thank you sir yeah so uh, it's a very good question uh, rohit ji uh, when you see the textile specialty chemicals growth uh, that has happened in the last quarter that is that is mainly uh, because of our ipo status that is now that we are a listed company uh, most corporates we have found a lot of traction 
uh, from corporates and we have been get, able to get more market share uh, from the large corporates in India. So uh, uh, what we were expecting, one of the reasons for going, uh, uh, doing the IPO was to improve our image in the marketplace. That has uh, helped us uh, primarily in the textile uh, business. In the, uh, in the HPPC business also, uh, we have added many number of uh, brands uh, to our uh, uh, ODM, that is the original design manufacturer uh, kind of business, where uh, we have companies like Walmart, we have companies like Amazon, who have increased their share uh, with us, and uh, a lot of new products uh, are in the pipeline uh, due to our facility, due to our uh, Rosary Center for Excellence uh, at IIT Mumbai. So if you see uh, in that manner, uh, we see a nice traction uh, from uh, big multinationals who now respect, uh, respect us. And we have a double whammy here because the Rosary Center of Excellence, which is, uh, which is at IIT, we have the uh, IIT, uh, complete IIT infrastructure uh, available uh, uh, to us. Uh, in the animal health and nutrition, uh, uh, there was uh, not much uh, uh, benefit at the present moment. Uh, in the export market, as I said, that Rosary was, has al always maintained that we will focus in the domestic market, and we've not really gone into the export market uh, other than the countries that we were already dealing with. So uh, I would not say that we have taken advantage of the uh, listing uh, status in the export market, but yes, in the domestic market, we have uh, gained uh, good um, uh, attraction from uh, corporates in HPPC as well as in the textile specialty chemicals. Yeah, uh, thanks, sir. Uh, that helps. Uh, the second question is, again, we touched upon the Rosary Center for Excellence. So how does this function in terms of the projects that we have? So how does it complement with the current uh, R&D structure? And in terms of investments, uh, what are the kind of investments? And are there new chemistries that we are uh, involved in? Because earlier we had uh, indicated that we are currently operational across, uh, predominantly across four chemistries. So is there focus on certain new chemistries? Uh, and how does this entire uh, setup will uh, change our product profile or the way we serve our customers? So is it more of customized products or it's a mix of both customized as well as uh, B2 products? Thank you. Yeah, Roiji, uh, it's a very good, good question. Uh, so what has happened is uh, at the Rosary Center of Excellence, the infrastructure that is available to us is tremendous. That means all kinds of um, uh, you know, R&D equipment is available to us free of cost. In the sense that uh, we have to pay some uh, testing charges over there. Uh, apart from that, uh, uh, the facility is open um, all, all the 24 hours uh, for our uh, application as well as for our testing. Now with this, what we've done is we have divided the R&D into different segments. So we have a textile uh, R&D there, we have a home uh, care R&D, and we have a personal care R&D. The, the fourth part of the R&D is the performance chemicals R&D. So we have four different segments over there, which are headed by uh, spe spe specialists uh, with around 40 uh, scientists working there uh, for us. Apart from, there, apart from that, uh, we have also uh, access to four PhD students there. So we can do four new projects. Since IIT is not operational at the present moment, uh, we are not able to, uh, I mean, IIT academic is not, uh, academia is not uh, operational. We are not able to make use of this opportunity, but uh, this opportunity also will be there for us in the future. Now, coming to the chemistries that you are talking about, uh, we are very clear. We are not going to digress from the four chemistries that we have. That is the silicons, uh, the surfactants, the enzymes, and the acrylic chemistry. So the acrylic chemistry is major, majorly with the performance chemicals, the silicons are across the uh, segments, and uh, uh, you know the other part of our business was custom products. So we will be focusing on uh, custom and product, custom products. So in the performance chemicals with acrylic chemistry, we will look at newer molecules uh, for the paint industry, for the water treatment industry, for the paper industry, as well as for the ceramic industry. But other than that, in textiles and in animal health and nutrition, we will focus on. Uh, we will focus on custom-made products uh, for that industry and formulations for the home and personal care. That's the strategy for, for us. We will not move away from that strategy. Yeah, uh, that's interesting to know. And uh, Mr. Flux, so just uh, a last question, if I can excuse in. 
uh, we have about 100 crores of cash on the books. So how are we going to utilize it? Uh, because it's been there from past, uh, you know, probably uh, two quarters or so. Uh, what is the plan? And uh, uh, when do we probably have the entire utilization of those cash? Thank you. Yeah, that's a very tricky question, uh, Roiji. Uh, you, uh, you see, because uh, not only you, but uh, everybody else from the investment industry uh, are aware that we are sitting on this cash, and uh, you will appreciate that we have uh, many, uh, many opportunities uh, that have come our way. Uh, in fact, uh, we have been very busy in the last quarter uh, evaluating uh, certain opportunities and uh, trying to make up our minds uh, which of these opportunities fit within our strategy. So our strategy is going to be the four chemistries uh, that we deal with and our return on capital employed uh, uh, should, be, uh, should be met. So we are looking at a 25% return on capital employed as well as we don't want to get out of the chemistries uh, that we are already working with. We uh, definitely have some targets in mind but nothing concrete as it uh, as as of now. As soon as uh, we make up our minds, and I don't think that is going to be uh, you know far away. Uh, maybe by the end of this quarter or beginning of next quarter, you'll have some good news from us. Uh, thanks a lot, sir, and uh, best of luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Swarnabha Mukherjee from Edelweiss. Please go ahead. Yeah, good evening, Edward G. Good evening, sir. Thanks for the opportunity. Uh, uh, sir, so my first question is uh, related to the animal health and nutrition segment. So just wanted some more granularity on, you know, what actually happened because of which there was a demand slowdown. What is the status right now? And uh, generally our normal run rate has been, I think, at least 16, 17 uh, crores uh, quarterly revenue from this segment. When do we expect to come back uh, to that level? Uh, so actually, there is a, there is a demand uh, slowdown from the market itself. You know, the demand picked up in the second quarter, in the third quarter for us, for the line of products that we are dealing with, there was a, a particular uh, demand uh, slowdown. So therefore, what we are trying to do is we are also trying to adjust our strategy where we are trying to get into the broiler concentrate market. We are also uh, trying to focus uh, on the pets uh, pets business the pet uh, shampoo and the pet uh, uh, pet care business, etc. So we are like 20% off from our performance uh, uh, as, as on the third quarter. Uh, however, uh, our business heads are very confident uh, that uh, the demand generally in, uh, uh, in the animal health and nutrition peaks during December to March. Uh, generally from November to February, there is, uh, there, is, uh, there is some demand slowdown because Always there is a scare of uh, this disease that happening during the winter season. However, we've seen uh, that uh, the demand peaks during December to March. And our, our boys are confident that the February-March uh, uh, season, uh, the February-March period, uh, will, we will be able to at least meet our uh, budgeted figures for, uh, for the animal health and nutrition. Okay, so just to understand a little bit more, so the demand slowdown is across uh, board for your competitors as well, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The demand slowdown is uh, across the competition because what happened is, uh, you know, the, there was a very low production in the beginning and suddenly there was a huge supply, uh, you know, position. Uh, that's, that's how the, but the demand was not there uh, for that. When I say supply position, that is supply position of the birds, you know. That really uh, uh, ramped up uh, quickly, and because of that, uh, we didn't see the demand coming. Okay, okay, got it, got it. Okay, and uh, so the next question on the raw material side, uh, I just wanted to understand, you know, that a lot of uh, this petrochemical-related uh, base uh, chemicals are moving up. So uh, I just wanted to understand acrylic acid being one of your key uh, raw materials. Uh, so, are you is there any uh, increase that you are seeing in the price from uh, your uh, suppliers and how you are managing that and how is the pass on happening on that? Yeah. So the um, uh, acrylic acid prices have firmed up. Uh, unfortunately for us, uh, there was a force major from one of the large uh, suppliers of acrylic acid 
that really has had impacted us uh, in the last quarter but that has normalized in the month of january and uh, therefore i don't see a big uh, uh, impact for us from the acrylic acid side but uh, the um, other chemicals uh, raw materials have been going up however uh, we are not that much uh, uh, related to petroleum products and therefore we were not greatly impacted other than uh, the artificial increase in prices due to the container uh, shortage in the uh, in the world shipping market Uh, so, sir, uh, is, is there a mechanism in will to pass on, pass on any kind of price increases? Not maybe a, sir, a sudden price increase, but a gradual price increase to the customers. Yes, yes. Even in the acrylic uh, acrylic acid, we we are able to uh, not only acrylic acid but acrylate based acrylic based products. We have been able to increase or uh, pass on the prices in the paint industry, in the paper industry, as well as in the detergent industry. however in the other products because they don't impact us so much we are not able to do that other than that we have a few uh, brands which we work with and the mechanism is complete pass on uh, of the price increase couple of brands that we the big brand that we work with okay so for the bigger brands it is a uh, formula link pass on mechanism yeah not all big brands because we don't have contracts with all big brands but with the brands that we have there is a formula linked uh, uh, pass on there for example uh, hindustan unilever Right, right. Got it. Uh, now, uh, sir, again, uh, uh, you had mentioned the one thing in your initial uh, statement that uh, because your uh, new capacity has uh, has started in by age partially, so that has helped you to uh, launch uh, newer products in these uh, categories. So I was just wondering, you know, uh, if you could uh, give us uh, some uh, qualitative insights on the kind of technology differences that you have in your silvasa plant vis-a-vis -vis your the age plant which enables you to you know bring this new product categories or in you know develop new kinds of products so if you can throw some light on that yeah uh, mr mukaji actually the type of products are the same but silvasa had a much smaller facility and this facility in the last one year was not able to cater uh, to the chemistry that i'm talking about those chemistries are emulsion polymerization and solution polymerization so the emulsion polymerization and solution polymerization chemistry we were not able to fulfill and uh, uh, supply to the market since this facility now is available in dhaj we restarted with a bang uh, whatever was available there and that's how the business in those segments uh, started picking up they are basically the emulsion polymerization or we call it, uh, we call it as emulsions that means emulsions for paints for paper right. uh, as well as uh, solution polymers for uh, water treatment and the detergent industry so that's what uh, helped us to uh, uh, get better volumes in the hppc uh, segment right got it uh, and uh, sir uh, last question from my side uh, uh, wanted to understand in the textile specialty chemical so uh, you have greener version of products Uh, so one was wondering what would be you know the, uh, how uh, you know given that your end user industry is very unorganized so how do you go about you know uh, by pricing these products to uh, you know make it attractive for the end customers these are the traditional ones which i think uh, would, i would expect to be cheaper than uh, you know your products so if you can throw some light on that so mr mukaji that is the um, uh, that is uh, that is the uh, selling point of uh, rosari so whatever products that we are offering to the textile speciality in the textile speciality space uh, which are green products they are cost neutral so when you see for example uh, if we sell a product which is against acetic acid then uh, our green acid will be cost neutral our green acid will be on par with acetic acid or a wee bit even lower than acetic acid so that's the uh, key point and that's that's the kind of uh, pricing strategy that we use so that we gain market share uh, from uh, from the commodities like you know even the um, uh, even the uh, alkali substitutes or even the scouring substitutes all of them will be cost neutral so we don't sell them at higher prices but we gain bigger volumes from the industry with good margins that means the margins are still better than the commodity products so that's our uh, uh, selling point you know key selling point Uh, to the st uh, textile industry that there is an uh, especially the textile industry is so well regulated that uh, they uh, they really don't they will re really not pay a higher price 
for any kind of products okay okay got it got it thank you so much sir i will join back in the queue for any further questions thank you mr mukherjee thank you the next question is from the line of girish patak from goldman sachs please go ahead yeah thank you uh, sir the uh, because the margin compression and the gross profit growth being lower than the uh, revenue and the volume growth it seems that uh, for all the clients uh, or contracts the raw material cost push has not been passed on so what are uh, which are these clients or contracts uh, and what are the characteristics of those contracts i i already mentioned that we have contracts with the uh, few brands where we are able to pass on uh, the raw material prices and the disruption has happened for a very short period of time basically so because the disruption has happened for a very short period of time and it was temporary uh, it is impossible to negotiate price increase uh, to the other kind of cli- clients within that short period of time and that's why you see a gross margin uh, contraction over there however the situation improved within two months you know the situation completely normalized within two months because uh, the v shaped uh, recovery was not expected by anybody in the world but you can see a v shaped uh, recovery all over the place and uh, you know then uh, whatever disruption happened uh, uh, in the logistics in the worldwide logistics that has come back to normal and we don't see that a challenge uh, 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 for the future however uh, having appreciated your question i would like you to um, i would like you to look at the nine month results and in the nine month results you will see that our top line is as per our guideline our ebitda margin is also as per our guideline so uh, i don't see any challenge uh, for rosari uh, to be able to uh, uh, deliver the numbers that we have already given as guidelines for the fourth quarter or for Definitely. the please so i'm not concerned about near term guidance uh, or near term numbers just want to understand the uh, contract uh, you know where like for example if you have a force major for particular raw material yes. so what what is there in those uh, pricing contracts when can you increase and at what frequency do these contracts come up for renewal this is not to get to the this year's numbers or anything just for our understanding that you know how are your contracts structured for key raw materials and for force major clauses yeah so like like i said uh, for the key uh, for the key raw, uh, raw materials the contracts are uh, a quarterly contracts uh, that we've done uh, with most of our suppliers the large uh, uh, raw materials and uh, with our end customers as i said only our uh, odm customers original design manufacturer or contract manufacturing customers we have a contract where we pass on uh, the raw material increases otherwise all our uh, uh, products in the textile uh, industry or the performance chemicals industry are you know by uh, mutual understanding whether whenever there is an increase in prices so in the performance chemicals we have a monthly pricing kind of a system where every month we declare the price for the emulsions or the solution polymers whenever there is an increase uh, there is a monthly uh, price increase between all the competitors that play in that marketplace okay so is it fair to understand that this this quarter you chose to absorb the cost increase uh, but you are not constrained by any contracts is that a fair understanding uh, i didn't get your question uh, rightly uh, so, this quarter when the we are seeing gross margin compression you is the understanding correct that this is a this is a decision that you've taken to absorb the the cost push because the cost push was very transient and temporary uh, and not because you were actually bound by the contract because as we are explaining it seems that you could have easily passed it on uh, but you chose to absorb it because it was transient is that a correct understanding uh, yeah that is a proper understanding of the subject because what has happened is there was such a short period and the international prices did not go up uh, you will appreciate that the international prices did not go up and therefore uh, we didn't have enough uh, you know uh, enough ammunition to go to the customer and say the prices have gone up the prices shot up locally because the products did not reach on time and there was mm-hmm. uh, uh, this um, uh, unreal uh, rm increase in price understood one last question on the, on the animal nutrition side what percentage of the business is companion pets and what percentage is you know like uh, poultry or cattle or those which are used for consumption so 90% more than 90% of our business is animal health and nutrition that is just a beginning industry you know it's it's between uh, it's a very small uh, percentage of the animal health and nutrition it is uh, and that's not our focus because that is more retail so at the present moment 
uh, we don't we are not really focusing on the uh, pet business uh, mainly focusing on the animal health and nutrition but there the exposure is more to poultry or is it is it cattle is it uh, what is it uh, which uh, which one the animal health and nutrition it is yeah. mainly poultry poultry would, you, would it be like 80 90% of that would be poultry or yes. how would you put yes. that yes 80% plus would be poultry okay thank you sir welcome thank you mr mukherjee so sorry thank you girish ji thank you the next question is from the line of charulata gaidani from dalal and brocha please go ahead Charulata Gaidani your line is in talk mode kindly go ahead with your question yeah uh congrats on the good set of numbers uh i wanted to uh, uh, know if you could give us tips between the increase in volume price and new launches for revenue split between increase in volume yeah yeah so like I, like i said a quarter and quarter we saw 40% growth in volume year on year we saw about 24% growth in volume basically uh for new products i don't have the numbers with me ma'am at the present moment what was the contribution of the uh, new lines that we introduced okay okay yeah then my second question pertains to in case of uh, uh in case of your uh, hp hp uh, hp pc uh what is the kind of contribution uh, to revenue that you are seeing for long term currently it is uh, i think it is more than uh, uh, it is around 57% of sales yeah ma'am so uh, yeah. so we are uh, looking at for hppc because this is a large uh, uh, you know it's a larger potential business when you see home and personal care it's a it's a, it's between 1 and 2 lakh crore business you know basically and performance chemicals is even uh, a, a, even bigger than that so therefore uh, our long term uh, vision will be that uh, in the in the long term we will see that at least 70% of our business uh, will become hppc that's how we look at it in the future uh, and additionally in the home and personal care uh, personal care for uh, for body and hair is something that is also picking up uh, for us uh, it was seeded like in the last year and this year uh, volumes are growing and that also will add to the home and personal care and performance chemicals and therefore from the 50 50% to 53% it will now go to uh, we plan that in the long term it will go to about 70% of our uh, contribution to our company sales okay okay and and in terms of uh, animal health do you do you see any challenges with the current kind of uh, disease uh, going on uh ma'am uh, the uh, in the animal health and business the bird flu is a viral disease which is commonly found mostly in birds during the winter season so mainly from november to feb every year there will be this uh, break uh, break of this viral uh, disease among the birds and this year uh, it has actually g- got more attention uh, maybe because of the covid 19 situation uh, and people uh, like uh, i mean like to hear this news and therefore it 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 blew up in the media like you know this year crows ducks peacocks and uh, some commercial poultry was also affected but mainly in the northern part of india this was mainly in the northern part of india the government uh, did a good job uh, in controlling this and extra preca- precaution was taken and therefore i think uh, uh, there will be no, there will not be uh, uh, a great effect on sales as against the previous years but because of uh, more attention being given uh, to this uh, topic this year we feel that there could be uh, some adverse uh, adverse impact but uh, i think in the next two uh, in the next uh, two months uh, um, especially after february i mean in the beginning of february uh, this completely dies down and by march everything is normal again okay okay yeah right and my uh, if i could uh, squeeze in one more 
in terms of r and d cost where where do you see your r and d spend growing for over over, over the next three years so uh, ma'am traditionally uh, our r and d costs are between 1 and 2% Uh, and uh, with the new uh, rosary center for excellence which has been established uh, uh, at the beginning of this year uh, but due to the uh, uh, particular situation uh, iit uh, mumbai was not operational and it just got operational in the last quarter uh, i believe the r and d spend will uh, uh, be on an upward swing for the next 3 years yeah to to what level so we should we should touch 2% uh, of our uh, on the on the r&d spend man okay and then absolute uh, numbers when i don't have the absolute numbers with me here but we could uh, we could provide that information to you okay yeah fine thank you and all the best thank you ma'am thank you thank you the next question is from the line of raju nandana an individual investor please go ahead Hi, thank you, sir. First of all, congrats for a good set of numbers. Thank you. Uh, I have just one. Yeah, I have just one question. Is there any estimate for the next uh, couple of quarters? Uh, what would be the revenue? Uh, actually, we would not. Uh, we generally do not uh, give you a forward-looking uh, answers. But since the new plant at Dhaj uh, should be operational by March. um uh we uh, maintain that we will uh, utilize that facility over the next 3 to 4 years so you can uh, calculate your numbers yourself okay thank you sir yes sir you thank you a reminder to the participants anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and 1 at this time Ladies and gentlemen that was the last question I now hand the conference over to the management for closing comments Yeah so uh, so thank you um, uh, thanks to all of you for taking out your uh, valuable time uh, and uh, asking very intelligent and pertinent questions uh, we are sure that we will deliver the numbers Uh, that we have projected for this uh, for this uh, calendar uh, business year and um, uh, and we are very happy uh, that our new project at the hedge uh, will be commissioned by the end of this year uh, by the end of uh, march uh, 21 uh, and um, we should be able to uh, perform well in the coming year thank you so much thank you thank you all thank you thank you, thank you. ladies and gentlemen on behalf of rosary biotech limited That concludes this conference. We thank you all for joining us and you may now disconnect your lines.